idea of the string on your finger. I gotta remember to pick up some French pastry for the wife. I like it too. You've got a great face for it. Hey, it's about time you guys got here. Gee, I've been waiting an hour. Oh, quit squawking and give us a hand. Chariot. This guy is no lightweight. Sign this. Sure. McNaughton. Lawyer, ain't he? Was. Might have been governor if he hadn't taken a nap at the wrong moment. Look, while he was driving? Yeah. You gonna fix him up? Yeah. For a solo job, ain't it? How did you know? Either that or you've got a funny way of writing. Okay. Come on, Pete. So long. So long. So long. Long distance. Uh, oh, hello? Uh, Mr. Chandler? Uh, they, they, they just brought him in. All right, Tommy, you take care of him. No, no, it, it doesn't matter. With his face as bad as that, they won't even bother to open the coffin. All right, all right, I'll, I'll see to shipping him early in the morning myself. And Tommy, let no one in the shop nor near the body. Right. Goodbye. Well, they fell for it. Delivered him to your shop, huh? Yes, sir. Are you sure the newspapers are convinced? They've already described it as a most regrettable accident. And you're going to see this thing through? Tomorrow morning, Clark C. McNaughton will be taken to Jersey and buried with all befitting honors. It's a long time before tomorrow morning. You should have received the body yourself and prepared it. And answered the questions of the police while you two stayed here, ready to get out of the state? <laughs> I'm no fool. Well, it's a dirty business and I don't like it. You should have told the truth about it in the first place. And suffered an investigation? Well, we could have gotten out of it some way. Yeah, how? Oh, Chandler's right. You're nervous. Well, maybe I am nervous. But I'll gamble that neither tomorrow morning nor a year from tomorrow morning will we hear the last of McNaughton's death. Well, that remains to be seen. Exactly. To the memory of a distinguished leader. And a good friend. Oh, of course. They, they just brought him in. Well? Gee, gee, Doc, I'm scared. What's the matter? Lose your nerve? I, I got a feeling something's going to happen. What? I don't... I don't know. It's a funny feeling, though. Doc, would you mind watching the place for a minute while I get a drink, a, a, a cup of coffee? Well, be careful not to drink too many cups. You might do a bad job. Thanks, Doc. He's followed me. I'm sure he has. Followed you here? Yes. 
I caught sight of him while I was checking my bag at the station. How did you come here? Well, I took a cab out of the way and then walked. Oh, he was awful tonight. He said he'd kill you before he'd let you marry me. I'll settle with him. Oh, you don't know him. He's terrible when he's angry. And he hates you so. Mm, because of my experiments. Well, Dad doesn't understand. There he is. Come with me now, please. No, honey. You go back to the station and wait for me. I'll be with you as soon as I get rid of him. Oh, but I'm frightened. Let me settle with him this time, once and for all. Oh, Ray, you've quarreled about this so often. Please don't. Now, don't worry. And go quickly. Going, Doc? Uh, yes. Well, I thought maybe as a favor you... I'm sorry, Tommy. He's dead. Murdered. Look at the blood. What do we do with him? This is an undertaker. Sure. Let's take him in. Hey, I got a dead man. He's been murdered. Hey, wait a minute. come from? We found him out in the alley. You what? Get in the door now. Hey, you should have called a cop. You oughtn't have brought him here. Well, ain't this an undertaking, Paula? Can't you call a cop? Sure, but it ain't the right thing to do. We don't want to get mixed up in the woods calling to court and all. No, like jury duty. Yeah. Hey, you don't expect us to carry it back, do you? Well, you'll have to wait till the wagon comes. I ain't got no right to let you go. Wait my eyes. Why should we wait? How do I know you ain't bumped them off yourselves? Hey, listen, punk, lay off that phone. Hey, wait a minute. Well, what'll I do with them? What do you usually do with them? I always thought an undertaking parlor was sort of a police station. Me too. Dead people and all.
I don't want to testify. Me neither. Fresh kid trying to keep us there. Yeah. Think we ought to tell a cop? I don't know. I guess he'll call him. We don't have to say that we found him, just that the undertaker wants to see him. What about that guy? Yeah, you tell him. Why don't you tell him? Oh, I ain't scared. Hey, officer. The undertaker sent me to get you. Somebody's been killed and they got him over there. How'd he get killed? I don't know. They just told me to get a policeman. What's the trouble here? The two fellas just brought a dead man in and left him here. Well, what of it? I told them they should have got you and, and left him where they found him. Where'd they find him? In the alley. Who is he? I don't know. Who brought him in? Two fellas. Two fellas? Well, I only saw one. Have you got him back there? Yeah. Well, keep him. I'm going to see if those two guys are still around. Forty-seventh precinct. Sergeant Collins speaking. They moved it, eh? Yeah, they brought the body to Chandler's and then beat it. All right, we'll send a wagon for it. You find them two guys and bring them in. Yes, sir. Hey, Chandler. Chandler, you got callers. Where is everybody? Is everybody dead around here? Hey, Chandler. This place gives me the creeps. Yeah, me too. Yes, this is it. But we can't stay here all night. Let's take them in. Somebody ought to turn up pretty soon. Sure. Daniels was never murdered. He looks like he'd been in a wreck. But there wasn't any money in his pockets. And the buttonhole in his vest looked like his watch chain had been torn out. Well, that's easy. He got hit by a car. The driver got scared and drove off. The force of the collision threw the body in here, and some thief came along and went through his clothes. That might be. Maybe it was the same guys that carried him to Chandler's. But if he was killed by a car, how did he get here, and how'd the blood get up the alley? Tell me that. Well, I don't know, Sarge. I ain't a detective. And where's his daughter? She's missing. Uh-huh. Maybe she ran off with the Undertaker kid. Even I thought of that. But where's the kid? I don't know. Right. Hello? Sutherland? Chandler? Yes, I just came from the funeral. Yes. Yes, all right. All right, but listen. 
I brought the real McNaughton body here this morning to dispose of, just as we decided. But when I got in the shop, the body of Lee was gone. How do I know? Well, what was I to do? I had to deliver something. So we buried McNaughton in his own coffin. No, no, they didn't open it. They never do when the face is mutilated as badly as Lee's was. Nothing. All we have to do is to lay low until we find out what became of the Lee body. Come on. Where are you going now? In the channelers. Shall I go with you? No. Someone's coming in. I'll see you later. Come in. Mr. Chandler? I am Sergeant Blue Baker from Detective Headquarters. Detective Roberts. Yes? Is the uh, man here who received that body last night? What body? The one that was found in the alley. Why, I don't know anything about it. You're a channel, aren't you? Yes. Where was you last night? Well, I was at a conference. I came here early this morning for the McNaughton funeral. McNaughton? Yes, McNaughton. There was no funeral here this morning. The funeral was held at the McNaughton residence in Jersey. So do I. The body was taken uh, there this morning. Do you mind if we look around, Mr. Chandler? Not at all. Thank you. Like to know. What do you mean? I mean that my employee is missing. I haven't even been able to reach him by telephone. Who else was here last night? Dr. Everett. He, uh, he has an office here. What's a doctor doing with an office in an undertaking parlor? That's none of your business. You know it's illegal to experiment and uh, uh, bisect. bisect on the body brought in here, don't you? Yes. Where is he? Who? This Dr. Everett. I don't know. Is he missing, too? Yes. Have you read the morning papers yet? No, I haven't had time. Well, the guy killed last night, and they brought him in here. Killed? A man from Trenton, name of Frank Daniels. Oh, no, I don't know anything about that. What time is this Tommy kid due for work? At 5 o'clock. I'll be back. I want to ask him some questions. So do I. Be brief, gentlemen. Be brief. Your nephew was murdered last night. Did you know that? Yeah. Well, what do you know about him? I don't know anything about him or his affairs. I haven't uh, spoken to him for more than two years. A uh, family quarrel? Yeah. Well, tell us about it. It's none of your business. Now, don't take that stand, Mr. Daniels. We are simply trying to find out who murdered Frank Daniels. Well, from the newspaper notices, it looks like it might have been uh, Fields. Well, now, why not let it go at that? You know where his daughter is? I do not. Well, she's left home. Well, that's her business. Don't you think it's funny that she should disappear the day that her father is murdered? I don't see anything funny in a murder. Well, ain't it peculiar? I'll say so. You see, we can't find her. Well, I can't help you. She's not here. We're not uh, very good friends. What do you want done to the body? I don't care what you do with the body. Now, see here, Mr. Daniels. You're the only relative Frank Daniels has. Unless we can find the daughter. Well, you send the body here and I'll, well, I'll bury it. Now, that's more like it. Was you in New York yesterday? I was not. Were you here? No. My, but you're talkative. You know, there are ways to make you talk. Now, I've answered your fool questions to the best of my ability. 
I've even given you permission to send that body here for burial. Now, I can't do any more than that. Good day. Good day. You can't prove where you was all day yesterday. Now, you get out of this house immediately. There's only one way we'll ever solve this murder. We've got to get that Miss Daniels and that undertaker kid, Tommy. Yeah, and, and that Dr. Everett. Yeah. But where? Where? I'll find them. not talking. I couldn't talk. After all, I don't know entirely what happened myself. I told you to be at the shop with me. How was I to foresee this Daniel's mess? It happened and there's nothing we can do about it. Couldn't we get the body out of the tomb? Well, there's no use getting panicky. Plenty of time. Right. What's the matter? Father murdered. Please, dear. Oh, don't. Why, Ruth. You believe that I killed him? Oh, oh I don't know what to believe. Oh, Ruth, dear, you've got to have faith in me. Well, you quarreled. But you can't believe that I did it. I don't know what happened, but you must trust me. Ruth, if you believe that I did it, I, I'll give myself up now. Oh, Reverend. Oh. We've got to learn what happened. They mustn't find us until we do. See you later, Mike. Come on, open up. Come on. Of all 
the dumb guys I've ever seen. What'd you expect them to do? Wait in the room to come along and pick them up? Well, how was I to know? I didn't have a picture of them. You should have thought of that before you went to Chicago. Well... Now we've lost track of them again. Oh. The bag just wanted in. He dreamed about a murder in 52nd Street. Might be a lead in the Daniels case. Want to see him? I've heard about these leads before. All right, bring them in. Roberts will mastermind the situation. Oh. He's full of hop. Roberts? Yeah. No, not him. The bag. Oh, that makes two of them. Yeah, man. Hello. Hello. What's it all about? I seem to know where a man's been murdered. Well, that's pretty. Who are you? I... I don't exactly know. What do you mean, you don't exactly know? What's your name? I don't know. You see, my memory's gone. I used to know who I was, but... I guess I don't know anymore. Listen, are you kidding me? Now, there's no use yelling at me. I only thought maybe you'd like to know how I felt. It's a very funny feeling. It just seems like somebody's been killed there. Where? In the alley on 52nd Street. But I guess there's nothing to it. I guess it's just a crazy idea. I won't bother you anymore. Now, oh, wait a minute. Oh, never mind, never mind. I guess it's just a notion. What about on 52nd Street? Well, uh, I don't know exactly. It's a place in the middle of the block. Frisco. 30 cents. Hey, what's this? A whistle. What's it for? I blow it. No. What do you know about this murder? Are you a detective? Guilty. Is he? He just told you he was, didn't he? I didn't hear it. Where do you live? Well, I've been living uptown lately, on 84th Street. Nice room. Nice lady. This bird sure is on hook. Who is this nice lady? Sybil. Who's Sybil? She's the nice lady. Sybil got me these clothes. Oh. And these are not your clothes? No. I guess I lost mine. Get it? Claims he lost his memory and don't know who he is. Dreamed that he saw a guy killed. And now he's lost his clothes. There sure is something funny about this bird. Oh. Take him out and book him for a bag. Have we got to get a name for it? Give him one. Yeah. You're Richard Rowe. Am I? Mm. Richard Rowe. Gee, ain't that swell. A name I can remember. Say thanks. All right. Say, uh... Where does Sybil live? 340 West 84th Street. That's where I live. <laughs> Take him out and amuse him. I want my whistle. Give him his whistle. Thanks. <coughs> Bring
bring in that Sybil dame. Okay. You, Sybil? Uh, yes, sir. Well, you're to come along with me. Oh, my. Uh, do you mind waiting till I finish my cleaning? Try to kid me, sister. Come along. What did I do? Well, we picked a friend of yours and... Uh, What's he done now? Murder. <gasps> oh. Come on, sister. Come on. Get your hat and come with me. Yes, sir. Oh. You killed Frank Daniels. Did I? You were hired by Dr. Everett and Miss Daniels. Was I? You killed him with a sharp, jagged instrument, a dull hatchet, or a box opener. What did you do with that instrument? What instrument? The hatchet that you killed Frank Daniels with. Oh. Is Frank dead? Did you know Frank Daniels? The name's familiar. Why did you ask if he was dead? And why did you call him Frank? Isn't that his name? Whose name? Frank's name. Yes. But what's his last name? Quick. Whose? Say, who's questioning who around here? I don't know. Where were you at 8.30 on the evening of October the 3rd? At 8.30? Yes. I don't remember. Then how can you, man, or not? I can't. I can't. I don't remember. You killed Frank Daniels with an axe. Did I? Didn't you? Couldn't anybody else have done it? Gee, I wish you'd let me see Sybil. You'll see Sybil, all right. I want to tell my new name. Here she is, sir. Oh. Hello, Sybil. Listen, Sybil, I... Oh, who did you kill? Well, now, I don't remember. But this man knows. Oh, what did he do? Never mind. Come here, Richard. Now you visit with this man. You like him. Is you sit down. Him? Not there. Oh, Here. Yes, sir. Now, don't you try to hide anything. No, sir. Where did you find this bird? In the street, sir. What street? 52nd Street, sir. Did you know that he had just killed a man? Oh, no. He couldn't have done that. Why couldn't he? Why, he's... He's so gentle. Did you give him those clothes? Yes, sir. What did he have on when you found him? A raincoat, sir. Was it raining? Uh, no, sir. It was quite fair. Oh, the moon was shining so beautiful. Never mind the moon. What did he have on underneath that raincoat? Oh, Nothing, sir. How did you know that? Why, I, I... Uh... All right, never mind that. You're trying to tell me that you found him wandering down 52nd Street with nothing on but a raincoat. Yes, sir. Then what happened? Why, uh, why, I took him home and... Gone? And I made a bed in the basement. And he's been in your ba uh, basement ever since, is that right? Uh, mostly, sir. What did he say his name was? He said he didn't remember. Quick, now, what do you call him? Why, well, I call him Snooky. No. All right, you can go. Uh, yes, sir. Can I take him with me? No, you leave him with me. Oh, Snooky, I'm going to try and get you out of this. Call me Richard. 
Goodbye, Richard. Goodbye, everybody. Come here, Richard. Everett, didn't mean to startle you. Just wanted to make sure there was no one else around. What are you doing here? Well, somehow or other, I seem to have got into a mess. I need a little help. How can I help you? Tell me what you know about the Daniels affair. What happened? I don't know. What happened to Tommy? I don't know that either. You didn't hide him, did you, Joe? Why should I hide him? Well, I thought that uh, maybe... Plan on getting rid of this? The clothes in this drawer have nothing to do with the Daniels case, if that's what you're thinking. Would the police believe that? Now you listen to me. The police are not going to know anything about it. Maybe. I'll make a bargain with you, Everett. I don't bargain over things like this. Then I'll give you a piece of advice. Well? Stick to your medical work and forget about the clothes in this drawer. You're not a detective and you're just wasting your time. No explanation? No explanation. Good night, Joe. Let's go back. What's the matter? There's another guy in the sidewalk. For the love of Pete. He ain't dead. This street ain't healthy. Wait a minute. Oh, come on. Let's get out of here. But we can't leave a guy what's alive. The last time you said we couldn't leave a guy what's dead. We nearly got in Dutch then. He's drunk. No, he ain't. He's hurt. What's the matter, fella? Oh. Had a crack on the head. Held up? No, I don't think so. Say, 
If you two fellas will give me a hand to the nearest speakeasy, I'll buy you a drink. Sure. Hello, hello. There you go. Here's your hat. Thanks. You Sybil? Yes, and I don't know where he is. Who? Richard. Oh, Richard Rowe? Yes. I wish you'd leave me alone. I'm so weary of policemen. Well, I'm not a policeman. I'm a friend of... of Richard. Oh! A Snooky? Well, he's not here. Well, where is he? He's gone. Where? I don't know. I used up all my savings to get him out of jail, and now he's missing. Sybil, I must find him. Now, think hard. Did he mention any place he might have gone? No. The paper said that he had on a raincoat when you found him. That was all. Well, may I see it? His raincoat? Yes. Oh, my. This is all I have left of my Snooky. Here it is. Tommy's. What? Nothing. I never thought of looking in the pocket. Oh. Is it from a woman? Uh, do you mind if I look too? Seven twenty nine Vine Street, Philadelphia. Just possible that is Tommy here? Tommy who? Tommy Freeman. I don't know nobody by that name. Listen, I'm Dr. Everett, a friend of Tommy's. Now I want to help him, but I must see him. Dr. Everett? Yes. Who is it? It's a Dr. Everett. Do Dr. Everett? Let him in. Come in. Hello, Tommy. How, how'd you find me? Found an address on a letter and took a long chance. Nobody else knows. Not a soul. But what's the matter with your eyes? It's a disguise. Doc, have you got anything to make me sleep? What's the matter? I hardly slept since I saw you last. Gee, I think I'm going crazy. Well, tell me what happened. Get it off your mind. That'll help. You wouldn't believe me. Nobody would. Gee, you think I was crazy, too. Sit down, Tommy. Now, Tommy, I'm your friend, and I want to help you. But if I'm going to do that, you'll have to tell me exactly what happened. I don't know exactly what happened. Come on, Tommy. Pull yourself together. Now then. Well... That was the night I was supposed to take care of McNaughton. Chandler was away, remember? Mm-hmm. Well, along, along comes two fellows with a dead guy, and they dumps him in the back room and beats it. Then... Go on. Well, I undressed the guy, and, and I no sooner finished when, when all of a sudden he started to move, and, and, and I got scared and ran. Well, well, the next morning I read the papers, and I came here, the only place I knew of to go. Gee, Doc, 
Oh, am I crazy? No, Tommy. I'm just beginning to understand. Where's the telephone? In the hall. Doc! Doc, what are you gonna do? It's all right, Tommy. We're gonna play a hunch. Long distance, please. Well, but Doc... Hello? Ray! Oh, darling, I've been so worried. Yes. You found Tommy? Where? In Philadelphia? Is he all right? Oh, I'm so glad. Yes, dear, I understand. Yes, I will. Well, what did Tommy say? Well, when will you be back in New York? Ray, it's the police! Give me that phone. Doc, what's the matter? Get your hat. Get me that number, quick. How do I know what number it is? It's long distance. Well, we've got you this time, young lady. Get me chief operator, then. This is the police talking. Are you arresting me? You bet your sweet life we are. On what charge? Suspicion of murder. Where are we going, Doc? New York. Gee, I wish I could get some sleep. This will be the seventh unsolved murder this year. Unless we catch somebody. That can go on. Well, it ain't my fault. Nor mine. My job is to prosecute murderers, not catch them. Yeah. Why don't you arrest Richard Rowe? We need him. Try and find him. Well, put more men on the case. Say, what do you think we're running? A standing army? I've got ten men on the case now. And as near as I can find out, nobody knows nothing. Ten men? Yes, ten. There's two hunting Everett. There's two watching Sybil. There's two trying to catch that roll nut. There's two trailing Chandler. And two trying to find that undertaker kid, Tommy. And as near as I can see, nobody cares who killed Daniels. I do. Election's coming on. Oh, yeah. But outside of you, nobody cares. Presby speaking. Well, that's the judge's responsibility. Judge Lewis has just released Mrs. Everett on a writ. What? Now, well, what's the use of catching them at all, then? Now we got to put on two more men to watch her. Frank Daniels has just been seen. Daniels? Yeah. Where? In Trenton. Then he's not dead? It's alleged he ain't, but didn't his uncle bury him? Well, he promised to. Oh, listen, I saw this man dead. His face was gone. I know it. Well, how can a man be alive without a face? I know you don't know. Who saw him? His uncle. When? Today. In Trenton? Yeah. Well, are you through Visden? Come on. Read all about the Frank Daniels case. Paper, paper, mister. Read all about the Frank Daniels case. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right out. Yes, sir. Extra. Paper, mister. Extra. Frank Daniels case. Read all about the Frank Daniels case. All right, Jimmy, open it. Isn't there some way to stop this? Uncle Robert, for heaven's sake, didn't you look at him before he was buried? Didn't you even see him? Why, this is Clark C. McNaughton. What? McNaughton? Why, no, it isn't. That's the body that we got for Daniels. Nevertheless, this is McNaughton. Well, with a face in that condition, it could be anyone. Well, that's not my nephew. He was a much smaller man. 
in it, isn't he, Father? No. I'm positive that this is the body that we got from the Daniels body. You know, this is a very disgraceful affair. Well, Mr. Daniels, I'm very sorry that you've been inconvenienced to this extent. We are trying to, uh... Yes. But it wasn't Father. It was McNaughton. Are you sure? All right. I've got to hurry now, but I'll call you later. Bye. It was McNaughton. Come on, let's go. What are we going to do now, Doc? Come on, Tommy, let's hurry. Oh, gee, I wish I could get some sleep. What do you make of it? Well, it looks like Chandler's got something to do with it. Why? This body came from his place. They must have made a mistake. Who's they? The police surgeons. They got the wrong body. They said there was only one body there. Then who did Chandler bury from McNaughton? Hmm. That's what we'll have to find out. I'll get a court order in the morning to open the McNaughton vault. All right. Hello, is that you, Sybil? This is Richard, Sybil. Oh, Richard. Oh, Snooky, where are you? I'm in Jersey. But they won't let me on the ferries. Because I haven't enough money. Every time I drive to the toll gate, they get sore and chase me away. Uh, uh, driving? Uh, what on earth are you driving? I'm driving my car. Yes, but they won't let me on the ferries. Why, I've always had a car, Sybil. You... You don't think I stole it, do you? I'm a block from the Hoboken Ferry, but they won't let me on it. Uh, oh, uh, Richard, you stay right there till I come for you. Uh, don't you dare drive around. You wait right there. Do you hear me? Gee, don't yell at me, Sybil. I've had enough trouble today. Yes, I'll wait right here. Shut the gate. Gee, Doc, I'm getting scared. What's that? What? I heard something. Ah, your bugs. Wait a minute. Come on. We can't wait here. You're hearing things. Yeah? Yeah. Shut up. Let's get out of here. idea. The dirty thieves. Yeah. Let's get out of here. It's a good idea. Where, where are we going with it? We're going to deliver it, Tommy. 
Yeah? Uh, who, who to? To the men who hired those thugs to steal it. Where do you want him? Right here. What's the idea? Playing detective again, Joe. I told you once before to keep your nose out of my business. And I remember that you emphasized it with a clout on the head. That wasn't nice. Yeah. Well, you'll never interfere again. Don't move, Joe. Get him over here. Well, what next, Doc? Call Mrs. Everett. Tell her to get Frisbee. Meet us at headquarters. Sure. Tell her we'll clear up this whole mystery. Hello, operator. You said 12 o'clock. It's now 15 minutes past 12. I'm afraid I can't wait any longer. I left a very interesting bridge game as it was. Oh, please wait, Mr. Frisbee. He'll be here. I know he will. How do you know? He said he would. Oh, well, then there's no doubt about it. Come on, boy. Hey! Rue Baker's office? Yeah. Thanks. Hey, wait a minute. Say, what's the idea of bringing this decoration in here? Put it down there, boys. Say, what is this? Are you bro Yes, but who are you? I'm Dr. Everett. Say, I've been looking for you. Good. This is the McNaughton, uh, the casket from the McNaughton vault. We're going to the McNaughton vault tomorrow. Mr. Chandler thought you might like to see it tonight. I did nothing of the kind. Now, wait a minute. I'll take charge here. Did you steal this? Did you steal it? I refuse to answer that question until I have consulted my attorneys. So you won't talk? Did he? Yes. Tommy and I can prove that. So you're Tommy, huh? Yes, sir. Wait a minute, Blue Becker. Will you be good enough to explain? The whole affair was caused by a switch in bodies. You'll see if you'll uh, look at that. Open it up. Who, me? Yes, you. It's all right, dear. Why? Why, this is Clark C. McNaughton. 
Yes, and there's nothing wrong with his face. No. Well, if he wasn't in a smash-up, how did he die? I think Chamber can answer that. McNaughton was murdered. Murdered? Yes, shot. Who shot him? Jack Lee, the gambler. He had been mixed up with McNaughton for years. That's what we were trying to cover up. Where did this take place? At McNaughton's apartment in Albany. What were you doing there? Well, McNaughton had called us all together for a sort of political conference. Us? Yes. Nolan, Sutherland, Jack Lee, McNaughton here, and myself. Go on. McNaughton accused Lee of double-crossing him. There was an argument, and Lee shot him. We started to bring Lee back here to see my lawyer, when suddenly he got panicky and made a dash for it. We followed, of course, as fast as we could, and found the car smashed, his face horribly mutilated. Right there. To save a public scandal, we decided to pass Lee off as McDonald. So you changed the clothes and switched the bodies? Yes. Our identification satisfied the local authorities and the body was sent here to my shop. What happened then? Well, the police mistook the body of Lee for Daniels. And so, after all, McNaughton here, for whom we had planned a pauper's grave, was buried in his own castle. You knew they wouldn't open it because of the supposedly mutilated face. Exactly. Well, I'll be. Well, I'm glad that's over. I haven't slept for weeks. See, neither have I. Take these three men to the lieutenant's office and hold them for further questioning. Come on, you. Sergeant, have that taken to the um, coroner's. Okay. Well, that solves the whole thing. Yes? What about Daniel? Well, that's right. What about that one? Daniel is alive. Tommy can prove that. Yeah, I saw him move under the sheets. Holy smacks, it was terrible. Father! Father. What? Why? Why, don't you recognize me? I... I seem to. Uh, what does she mean? Roe is Frank Daniels. What? Oh! Then he, he killed himself? I'm beginning to get a funny feeling again. Let me get this straight. The explanation of this is very simple. When Daniels left me, he was set upon, beaten, robbed, and left unconscious. By who? That's for you to find out. Then he was picked up for dead and taken to Chandler's. Then what? Later, he recovered, got down off the slab in Chandler's, and left. The police surgeons then made a mistake in, uh, in bodies. Well, go on. That's all. Hey, can I go home and get some sleep now? You get out of here, I'll put you to sleep now. Dad, Ray and I are married. Well, isn't that nice? Oh, dear. What's the oh. matter? Well, when he was Richard Rowe, he was going to marry me. And now that he's Daniel, I don't know what he'll do. Oh. Oh, Snooky. Hmm. Oh, Snooky. Hello, Brubaker speaking. You found a body. Whereabouts on 52nd Street? What? In an alley? 